a long, long time ago, when I was like 12 years old, I had my allowance money, I got on my bicycle, I rode to this grocery store that was really close to my house that had a pretty good selection of fish and stuff. And I'm meandering around the aisle there, checking everything out, and probably worried about what color spinnerbait to buy or whatever. Well, this old man that worked in the meat department, at least I think he did, based on the way he was dressed, he walks up to me, he says, son, he said, are you a fish or a fisherman? I said, well, I'm a fisherman, of course. What, what do you mean? He said, well, don't you know half the crap in this aisle is designed to catch you and not the fish? Just grab one and go. At even 12 years old, that made total sense to me, and it has stuck with me ever since. And truth be told, it, that probably applies more now than it did back then because, man, are we bombarded with crap these days. And it carries over into catfishing. And in this case, it carries over into our baits. I don't care what kind of package crap you, you've been thinking about picking up at the store. And no matter if it's those shad with the artificial blood added or garlic this or beef blood that, ignore it. Don't waste your money on it. Save the money you would spend on that crap. Buy yourself a couple cast nets or get some jigs or something to go after some panfish. Uh, put your time in on the water, learning where to find those panfish, learning where to throw that cast net, learning how to throw that cast net to start with. Because if you're going after the real predators, the big blues, the big flatheads, the really big channel cats, don't get me wrong, stink bait will catch channel cats. And that package crap at Walmart, if you're going to a little pond, a stock pond, or you know something where the catfish are starved and they don't have many uh, sources of natural prey, you, know, you can catch them on anything. But if you're going to fish real lakes and real rivers for real predators, you've got to have fresh, natural baits that they're used to eating. Whether that's shad or bluegill or skipjack, or whatever it is, don't waste your money on the crap in the store. Spend your time learning and, and looking for natural baits to give to those catfish. One really common misconception about catfishing has to do with patience and how you spend your time. There's a lot of people that believe that to catch catfish you gotta be really patient or that you gotta sit on the bank all day in one spot and wait for that bite. That just couldn't be further from the truth. I find that for the most part, most of my luck throughout the day is gonna pull is gonna happen within moments of me pulling up to a new spot. If things get stale, I'm gonna pick up and I'm gonna go to a new spot and I'm gonna get bites right away as soon as I get to that new spot. Once it gets stale, time to go to the next one. And that doesn't matter if I'm fishing from the bank, like if I'm uh, hopping from creek to creek with my truck, or if I'm out here using the boat to hit different parts of the river. The same thing holds true no matter what. Take for example the spot that I just pulled up in. I had been down river and hadn't caught a fish in an hour. So I came to a different part of the river with uh, a few different elements that are going on that are completely different than the spot that I was at. I've been sitting here maybe four or six minutes. Hey, look at this fat shop. Just waiting to take my bait. So I think it's important to run and gun, guys. If you're not catching fish, move. I bet you've all heard the expression that one of the things that you can't replace or get back or buy more of is time. And that's very true especially when it comes to our time off work or our time out on the water. That is probably the most valuable thing that we've got, and you certainly can't buy more of it. Although maybe you can buy more efficient time. Let me tell you what I mean by that. One of the many ways that catfishing is different than fishing for most other freshwater species is that we don't use lures. It's not as simple as just tying on a, a spinner bait like you would for bass and starting to chunk it at a tree. In catfishing, we use a lot of different types of rigs and the various different types of bait, whether they be cut bait or live bait. But our rigs often have many pieces and can sometimes be elaborate to tie on to our main line. All that takes time. But there is a product out there, not that I'm big on pushing products on the channel, but there is a product that can make tying these rigs far quicker, far more efficient, and can ultimately give you more time on the water because you can do all this work at home when you're just watching TV or you know just killing time maybe even at work if you've got a job that would allow you to do something like that 
but it's this. This is the the Rig Pack 60 from Rig Wrap. I don't know if you guys have seen Rig Wrap stuff before, if you know what they're about, but basically the whole point of Rig Wraps is to save you time on the water because this thing is full of these little organizers where you can pre-tie your rigs at home. Like say for example, these rigs right here. These are Dragon Rigs. They've got three-way swivels, they've got a, a sinker dropper, a sinker, a hook leader with an inline swivel and then another hook leader and the hook and some of them have floats. That's a lot of crap to tie if you're out here on the water. Let's just say that this one over here were to break off. I'm going to pick up my speed here. If this one over here were to break off and I needed to tie a new one on, well if I didn't use rig wraps, I'd have to tie all those pieces individually. Or I can just reach in here. I actually grabbed one for bumping, but that's okay. Just reach in here and grab one of these. If that line were broke off, I'd just grab my main line, tie a polymer knot around the end of this swivel before I even open the package, tie a polymer knot, so that once I open this, all I gotta do is bait it and go. But yeah, just pop it open. You can label these, by the way. That's how I knew this was a bumping setup. And then just unwind it. You can get these in all different sizes. So if you, if what you're tying on is not quite as elaborate, or if it's more elaborate, you can you can use that. Or if you're using a, a like a big peg float or something like that, there'll be space in there for that. And that's it. If I had po used a polymer knot to tie that onto my main line, I would already be back to fishing. And what did that take? Like 10 seconds, 12 seconds. Tying this up individually would probably take. A couple of minutes you do that multiple times per day and then multiple trips throughout a season you're getting more time on the water from rig wrap check them out rigwrap.com uh, and a lot of other places are selling them too because they're an awesome product that's the rig pack 60 check it out so i realized that not everybody fishes the muddy mississippi river and for that matter not everybody fishes muddy water at all however most of us that are going after catfish are at least during some time of the year going to be fishing some pretty stained water whether it be because of spring floods or maybe we're just fishing really deep or maybe we're fishing at night where there's no light at all I bring this up because it's really important to understand that the primary way that catfish locate their food it's not on sight it's on smell sometimes it's on vibration but above all it's on smell that's really important to know because if you are in the habit of using sunscreen or bug spray or maybe even smoking those nasty old cigarettes while you're out there on the water you're messing up if you're not taking the steps to get the, those smells off of your hands before you handle your bait whether it be live or cut bait you're transferring that bug spray and that sunscreen to your bait and giving the catfish something that they don't want and covering up something that they do want now you can just put your hands in the water and hope that that did the job you could go to your local sporting goods store and buy some stuff that is supposed to take care of those unnatural scents but in my personal opinion the best the quickest and the cheapest way is a mud bath or in this case a sand bath because there's not a whole lot of mud where I'm at just pull over to the bank man after you get done with your lunch or after you get done applying your, your bug spray pull over and get some sand or some mud and really rub it in rub it in those cuts get it stuck underneath your fingernails really get it worked in there and it'll take care of all those unnatural sets before you put it on your bait i promise you guys if you'll implement this into your game plan for your day of catfishing it will make a difference look at that gorgeous mississippi blue cat absolutely gorgeous color not a flaw on that fish. I think it's beautiful. All right, listen, without a doubt, the most important thing that I'm gonna to talk to you about today is selective harvest. I'm gonna to try to keep it short and sweet. In the same way that humans don't all have the genetics to, let's say, grow to over six feet tall or have ripped abs or run a six minute mile, not all catfish have the genetics to, uh, to grow to 100 pounds or 50 pounds or even 40 pounds. It's just, that's just not the way it works. And along with that, it's been proven over and over and over again that larger fish are better breeders than smaller fish. 
if for no other reason than the fact that they can produce and carry more eggs. But beyond that, larger fish have already proven that they have better genetics, so they have a better chance of producing offspring that can also get big and grow to trophy sizes and then produce more offspring. So I show you this fish. Now this is not a trophy. Woo. It's an 18 pound, it's an 18 pound Henri Mississippi Blue. But I show you this fish because to say, guys, this is this is a mature fish. This fish has been breeding for a few years, and this is a fish that may very well have already shown that it has the genetics to grow to trophy size and to be one of the best breeders in the river. So I just hope that in the future when you guys are out there fishing and you're reeling in catfish after catfish that you'll consider selective harvest. Me personally, I never keep one over 15 pounds. Those fish are mature, they've been spawning for a little while, and they're already beginning to show signs that they could one day be a, a true trophy and be one of the leading breeders in the river. That's important to me to put them back and I hope it will mean something to you guys too. As always guys, I appreciate you watching my videos. Uh, I encourage you to go back through my library and look at all the fish that I've caught and released. I truly believe in it and I hope you'll give it consideration. Selective Harvest works. Thanks for watching. This production was brought to you by Battery Outfitters. With locations all over the Mid-South, they are your neighborhood battery store.